Hey guys and welcome to another video. So you managed to get Warzone running but now you're struggling to get a consistent number of frames per second. In this video I'm gonna give you some hints that will help you get the best performance out of your PC so maybe you get Warzone to a consistent number of frames that you can play on. This video is split into three parts. At first I'm gonna give you some general advice on how to prepare your PC before playing Warzone then I will go through the settings which I used which worked best for me in Warzone and then I'm gonna show you some settings for the Nvidia or AMD drivers that get the best performance out of your PC. The first thing we should do is make sure you're using the right power plan. So right click on the Windows button then go to settings and in this box start typing edit power. Choose edit power plan then go here all the way to the top at power options and make sure you're utilizing high performance power plan. If your PC is getting too overheated, either your CPU or GPU is getting overheated, switch back to the balanced mode. Close this window and go back to the window setting tab and start typing performance. Adjust the appearance and performance of windows. Click on it, then adjust for best performance. This will disable all of the Windows eye candy features. Remember this setting as you might just want to go back to it and yeah, just select let Windows choose what's best for my computer. It will re-enable all of them as they were before. But before playing the game, adjust for best performance ensures that Windows won't take any of the performance that you need when you're running Warzone. So just click on apply and then OK. As you can see, my desktop went black and so on. Don't worry about it, you can go back to it anytime you want. The last option is game mode. Just click on game mode settings and make sure you're having game mode set to on. This setting informs Windows whenever you're playing a game. And what Windows does is that it's stopping all background activities, including for example Windows updates so that it doesn't start in the middle of your game and ultimately affect your performance. So if it's not already on, please set it to on. One last thing before moving over to Warzone settings is to double check what apps are utilizing your resources in the background. So go ahead and open Task Manager and order everything first by GPU. You, you will see here in my case I have Epic Launcher which I would need to close. And then order everything by memory usage. You will see Google Chrome is actually utilizing 1.5 gigabytes of my RAM. You would need to close that application as well. Of course, there are some apps which are absolutely needed, but those that you opened up and you don't need, please close them before starting the game. Battle.net Agent is also consuming quite a lot of resources and it's always running in the background of your game. So one thing you should do is go to the options and then go to game settings Move over to General tab and make sure that when you launch a game, you exit Battle.net completely. What this does is that as soon as you start Warzone, it will also close Battle.net Agent. I had one case where my performance was reduced to half because Battle.net was consuming quite a lot of resources in the background. Okay, now let's move over to the Warzone options. So first of all, let's open the options and then as a first thing, move over to the General tab. As you can see in the top left side of my screen, I have two widgets enabled. These are the frames per second and the GPU temperature. In order to activate those, as said, move over to the General tab and all the way to the bottom you will see the frames per second counter over here and the graphics processing unit temperature over here. Reaching a high temperature on the GPU will automatically activate GPU throttling, meaning the GPU will reduce in performance in order not to overheat and ultimately be destroyed. Now let's move over to the graphics tab. The first thing you will notice on the graphics tab is on the right side you have VRAM usage, which is the memory of your GPU. Most of the options in the graphics tabs might increase or decrease the VRAM usage. Of course your aim is to keep below the maximum VRAM usage of your card. I would even go to at max 80% of the VRAM usage. For display mode you have several settings but only full screen or full screen borderless makes sense for you. Full screen would offer the most performance while borderless offers you the ability to alt tab out of your game much quicker. If that's of no interest to you as it is in my case go for full screen. Next you have render resolution. Click on advanced. This is the actual resolution to which your game is displayed. By default it is set to your native resolution of your screen. 
you can go in here and change it to a lower resolution but please remember to always keep the same ratio between the horizontal and the vertical number of pixels another option you have is to specify a percentage of the total resolution that you want to utilize right now it's set to 100 percent but you can set it to 80 percent this is something which i did on my nvidia geforce 960 laptop in order to increase a little bit the number of frames as said before you can also reduce the display resolution by keeping the same ratio let's move further down vsync you should always keep on disabled frame rate limitation click on advanced first of all you have out of focus limitation this is when you alt tab out of your game not really important then you have the limit for when you're in the menu the most important one is gameplay limitation there are two reasons why you would want to limit your fps in the game first it's because your monitor is physically limited to displaying a specific number of frames per second this is the refresh rate of your monitor as you can see in my case it's 144 so what this means is that my monitor cannot display more than 144 frames per second if you have a 60 hertz monitor then the monitor will not be able to display more than 60 frames per second for that reason even if my card would be able to output more than 144 frames per second i would still limit it to something let's say to 160 i'm not setting exactly 144 because i want to make sure that frames are ready for the monitor to display and there are no hiccups in my in my display in case you have a 60 hertz monitor my suggestion to you is to set something around 80 frames per second here the second reason why you would want to limit your frames per second is because your gpu is getting overheated and it's activating the gpu throttling which i mentioned earlier in order to avoid that you can also go for a lower amount like 50 or 40 frames per second even though that sounds really bad, having a consistent number of frames is much better than having ups and downs in the frames per second. Nvidia highlights, I would always keep it to disable unless you want to utilize this feature. Don't change display gamma unless you want to play this on a TV. Texture resolution, I'm going for normal, but you can go for low or even very low if you're having trouble maintaining a good frames per second. Texture filter, anisotropic, I'm also using normal, but you can go for low if you're having problems with the performance particle quality i already set it to low bullet impact and sprays set it to disable unless you think this is a useful information for you in game tessellation you can also go for disable completely disabled i have it set on near let's move further down everything in shadow and lightning can be set to low or disabled since it's putting a lot of pressure on your gpu post-processing effects here i set everything to zero or disabled except anti-aliasing this actually rounds a little bit the corner of your textures so the image doesn't look that pixelated these are the basic settings you should start with if you're finding that your game looks a little bit bad you can go ahead and increase anti-aliasing you can go then increasing the texture resolution and the filter texture filter anisotropic or you can even add some of the nice to have shadows, lightning and other details in your game. Now that I showed you the basic settings from Wordzone, let's move over to the third part of the video, the Nvidia or AMD settings that you should use in order to further improve the performance of your game. So first, right click on your desktop and open up Nvidia Control Panel or AMD Radeon Settings. I don't own AMD, but I will also show you the similar settings from AMD that you should go for. Then move over to Program Settings. Select here Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Or simply click on Add and add your, add your game either directly from this list of recently used apps or by browsing to the installation folder. In AMD case, you need to create a, an application profile by simply clicking on the add, then browse buttons, and then selecting your application and double clicking on it. The next thing you should do, and this should be valid for both AMD and Nvidia, is to try to leave most of the settings to applications controlled. The reason we are doing that is because we already set most of these options from the game itself and it wouldn't make sense to change it from, from the Nvidia or AMD settings. Let's move further down. One of the most important settings you can change in Nvidia is the power management mode. Here you can choose prefer maximum performance 
for getting the most out of your GPU or using adaptive in order to leave the GPU cool down from time to time. Of course, you can also go for prefer consistent performance if you want to have a very good looking picture. In my case, I went for prefer maximum performance. There is no equal uh, setting in AMD, or at least I haven't found it, which actually refers to the power management mode of the AMD card. Let's move over to shader cache. I would set this to off, especially if you're having trouble with starting up Warzone. The same shader cache setting you can find in AMD and you should set it to disabled. Move further down. For texture filtering, you have multiple options. In Nvidia's case, I would first of all, enable anisotropic sample optimization, set the texture filtering quality to performance in order to get the most performance out of the video card. You can also go to high performance here if you find this to work better in your case. Three linear optimization should also be set to on. In AMD case, you have multiple options. I would keep morphological filtering off. I would put texture filtering quality to performance and I would enable surface format optimization. Threaded optimization should be set to on, although I think it's already set to on by default. I haven't found any similar setting in AMD, but I think it should also be automatically set to on by default. So this is it guys. I hope this was helpful for you. As always, it would be highly appreciated if you drop a like, a subscribe and a share with your friends. If you still need some help, you can also drop a comment down below and I will do my best to, to help you out. Have fun and see you on the battlefield.